Hi, this is Ms. Black, and this is Open Campus Math 099, and we are now on Module 8, and we are still working on factoring rules, rules on how to break a polynomial expression into multiplication. Today our new rule we'll learn is called difference of perfect squares. So before we can even do this rule, we have to understand our vocabulary. So let's go to the board. The first thing is to understand the name of this rule is called difference. And the word difference automatically implies the operation subtraction. So in order to do this rule, your expression must have one subtraction symbol. So you'll have a term in the front, a subtraction symbol, and a term in the back. So to do this rule, we'll have a binomial, only two terms connected by subtraction. The second part of this rule's name is perfect squares. Well, we already discussed this this semester. A perfect square means a number times itself, or it can mean a variable times itself. So to know how to do this rule, you have to know the numbers that are perfect squares and the variables that are perfect squares. So we're going to make a list here. And I would highly recommend you write this list on an index card and you learn to memorize it. It will make your life so much easier. The numbers in, in math that are perfect squares are numbers times themselves. So 1 is a perfect square. It's 1 times 1. 4 is a perfect square. 2 times 2. So we're going to make a list of the first 20 numbers that are perfect squares. 1, 4. 9 is 3 times 3. 16 is 4 times 4. 25 is 5 times 5. 36 is 6 times 6. 49 is 7 times 7. 64 is 8 times 8. 81 is 9 times 9. 100 is 10 times 10. 121 is 11 times 11. 144 is 12 times 12. And I'm going to put dot, dot, dot because this list will go on. In your class notes, I've given you the full list of the first 20. But it's important to note that to do today's rules of factoring, you can only have these numbers in the terms. The third thing you have to understand is a perfect square can also be a variable, a letter times itself. So, We've already discussed this this semester. What is x times x? Well, that's x squared. That's a perfect square. It's something times itself. So if I ask you what's x squared times x squared, that's x to the fourth. That's a perfect square. What is x cubed times x cubed? Very good. It's x to the sixth. Because remember, when you multiply letters, you add exponents. 3 and 3 would make 6. What's x to the 4th times x to the 4th? x to the 8th. What you should notice here is there's a pattern. If a variable is a perfect square, what do you notice about all their exponents? That's right, they're even numbers. So, to learn today's rule, before you can even do the rule, you have to look for three things. You must have a binomial connected by subtraction. That's what the difference means. You must have a number that's a perfect square. And you must have a variable with an even exponent because it's a perfect square. So if you look here in your class notes, let's just make sure we understand. I have four expressions up here. Which expression is the difference of perfect squares? Is it A? No, because that is not a difference. That is a sum. So that doesn't work. Is it B? Well, it has the difference, but wait, 8 is not a perfect square. So that's not today's rule. Is it C? It's got the difference. 9 is a perfect square, but look what's understood to be the exponent. That's a 1. That's not even. If it's not an even exponent, we can't do this rule. So it's very important before you even try to do this rule, you have all the components. Is example D a difference of perfect squares? Yes. 
There's the subtraction sign. 25 is on our list of perfect squares. Our exponents even. Once we know it's a difference of perfect squares, this is very simple to factor. You put two parentheses, and you think what times itself makes each of these terms, because they are perfect squares. Well, we know what multiplies to make it x squared, x times x. We know what multiplies to make 25, 5 times 5. And remember, because these are perfect squares, we should have the same term the same term. Now, because we want to subtract, we know the terms have to be different signs. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. If you recall in our previous notes, there's a name. These are binomials who you change the middle symbol. They were called conjugates in the previous chapter. So when you factor doing the rule difference of perfect squares, your answer always will be conjugates. Let's try one or two more out of the class notes. This rule is not difficult, but you've got to make sure you have all the components. So if you look at your class notes and you look at example 5. Example 5 in the class notes say x squared plus 64. I would ask you to factor that. I know what you're going to say. Oh, this is a perfect square. It's on the list. This is an even exponent. But remember, the rule is called difference of perfect squares. Is that a different sign? No. This has a name. Add means sum. This is a sum of perfect squares. And no matter what you want to do, a sum of perfect squares will never factor. This is prime. Now, I know you probably do not believe me, but I'll prove it to you that this not, does not factor. If you put the two parentheses, I, x squared is x times x. I agree, 64 is 8 times 8. But guys, there's a plus here, which means these signs would have to be alike. If this really is the answer factored, we should be able to check it multiplying. And to multiply a binomial times a binomial, what method do we have to do? FOIL. So watch, when you do FOIL, the first would be x squared. The outers would be positive 8x. The inners would be positive 8x. And the last would be positive 64. Now I see your x squared. I see your 64. But what's going to happen if those terms are positive? We're going to have to add them and make a positive 16x. Did this expression have a positive 16x? No, it did not. So I'm telling you, you can never factor a sum of perfect squares. The answer is always going to be prime. It can't happen. All right? In your notes, let's look at one more example for difference of perfect squares. Let's look at example 8. 6a to the 4th minus 6. Again, I want to factor this. We still got to go back to our previous lessons. And remember, when the directions say factor, we have now all these rules. The first rule of factoring is always GCF. If there is something in common, we must divide it out. And if you look, both of these terms have a 6. So we are going to do the GCF rule first. We're going to pull out a 6 and tell me what's left. 6a to the 4th divided by 6 is a to the 4th. Negative 6 divided by 6 is negative 1. Now, we're not done. Just because you do one rule of factoring does not mean you're finished. Now, if you look in here, this is today's new rule. There is a different sign, and both of these are perfect squares. One is on our list of numbers, and a to the 4th has an even exponent. So this will break down, and I'm going to abbreviate DPS for difference of perfect squares, into two parentheses. What times itself is a to the fourth? a squared. What times itself is 1? One? 1. In order to get a subtraction, you have to have one of each symbol. 
What do you do with the six you already pulled out? Remember, it comes along. Now, a lot of you would stop there and say you're done. And that's the problem with factoring. You always have to check. Can I do another rule? If you look, once the GCF's at, you're done with it. But if you look here, you have perfect squares. You have a one and an even exponent. But that's a, a sum of perfect squares. So that can't be broken down anymore. We leave it. But if you come here, one is a perfect square. There's your even exponent. There's the difference sign. This still is a difference of perfect squares, which I'm going to abbreviate TPS. This can be broken down into two parentheses. What times itself is A squared? A. What times itself is 1? One? 1. How do you get a subtract? One of each symbol. So if you look, that's all connected by multiplication. That's what factoring is. So please, don't ever assume factoring is a one rule kind of thing. When you're factoring an expression, you start out by pulling out a GCF, and then you look to see if there's another rule embedded. Thank you.